From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that aims not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. All from the I'm Shocked Department. I'm shocked. It's from the Associated Press. Imagine this. A study says they did a study. They spent money doing a study. You know what they found? (laughs) Here's the headline. Women not saving enough for retirement. (laughs) Oh, yes. Uh, it's Dateline, New York. You got to hear this story. I'm like, oh wow, I'm shocked. It says here, women may not earn as much as men or fly up the corporate ladder as quickly, but they get the last laugh since they live longer, right? Well, as it turns out, according to this story, women probably aren't saving enough to bankroll those extra years in style. They invest more conservatively, if they invest at all. I added that. Uh, Because it's true. Start saving later, usually after their husband dumps them for a younger model, I would imagine. (laughs) They realize they guess they're putting some money away. (laughs) And are more likely to be in and out of the workforce. Who told you that? Who's been saying that on this show for years? Well, it says here, this is according to a study released by Hewitt Associates, a human resources consulting firm. It says here, suddenly retirement isn't looking so rosy. Women live an average of 22 years after retirement versus 19 years for men. And medical costs are rising. So women will need to save 2% more than men every year over 30 years to maintain their standard of living upon retirement, the study found. The importance of saving didn't dawn on Jerry Laughlin until she was in her 40s and started working in human resources. She said, I was looking at pensions all day and was seeing what happens to employees who don't save. That's when it really set in, said Laughlin, now 63, a resident of Kansas City, Kansas. She's been playing catch up ever since, and now she doesn't plan to retire until she's 67. Says here, Laughlin isn't the only one who's learning her lesson the hard way. The Hewitt study found women today still do worse by every measure. They start saving later, by two to four years. Invest less, 7.3% versus 8.1%. And are in and out of the workforce more often for family reasons. Gaps that can result in hundreds of thousands of dollars in missed earnings, raises, and benefits. Shocking! says here, the study looked at the projected retirement levels of nearly 2 million current workers of varying ages at 72 large U.S. companies and used actual employee balances. Allison Borland, an author of the study, said, Women tend to be a little more risk-averse, more fearful of losing money. They're not fearful, though, darling, of wasting money, are they? They're not fearful of pissing money away, are they? No. No, they're not. No, they're not. Says here, women's saving habits haven't improved significantly over the past several years either, Borland said. They're all going to be living under that freeway underpass. 
says here, the study also found a quarter of women didn't contribute at a high enough level to take advantage of the company match, which is typically 50 cents for every dollar up to 6% of pay. Does our company do that? There's some kind of match. I don't know what it is. I think I think so. <laughs> it was the last match I remember at this company. Gene Rayburn had a match, and that was about it. On average, women earned fifty-seven thousand dollars versus eighty-four thousand dollars for men. Yet, women will have longer retirements than men by an average of three years. Socking away more now can improve the quality of those extra years. You uh, will be eating a better grade of cat food when you get up there, ladies. You don't want to be eating a little friskies. You want that gourmet cat food. That stuff they sell at Petco. Says here, delaying retirement could have a big impact, too. Every additional year is more time earning and less time sapping savings. One of the biggest missteps people make is cashing out plans when switching jobs. That wipes out 30% or more of the account's value in taxes and penalties. Not surprisingly, the study states 90% of women were unsure about managing their finances. How about you crack open a book, ladies? I know the Wall Street Journal isn't as colorful as some of the other papers. There's no pictures in there of, uh, uh, uh you know. Angelina Jolie's babies, or uh, <laughs> there's no pictures of uh, Jennifer Aniston, <laughs> but you might learn how to invest your money. <laughs> Most women I know couldn't be bothered doing anything like that. Jesus. It says more companies are offering investment guidance now. <laughs> I guess women aren't taking advantage of that either. Says here, overall, four out of five men and women aren't saving enough to keep up the same lifestyle after they stop working. Because of inflation and rising medical costs, Hewitt estimates workers will need to replace 126% of their salary after retirement just to retain their lifestyle. Boy, I'm going to need to save a lot more. Says here, both men and women are on track to replace an average of just 67% of that amount. But with a longer retirement stretching uh, before them, women may want to think about closing the savings gap fast. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. They're going to hope they're going to meet another guy, get married again. They're going to hope that they uh, find some guy who's got cash all who's going to rescue them. You know, uh, the way women think is very much based on the fairy tales they hear as little girls. And the idea that Prince Charming comes in on the white horse, puts the glass slipper on your foot, and then takes you off to that land where your visa bill gets paid, and your American Express bill gets paid, and your student loan gets paid, uh, that's what little girls grow up with. And that is the way they live. Guys grow up knowing that uh, we have no choice but to be chained to a desk until we're dead. We know that. We know there's no, uh, the, you know, us doing the old soft shoe out of our uh, responsibilities. We have to work. Nobody's going to pay our bills because we're guys. Nobody is going to pay our bills. But women have this idea that uh, men are going to come along and uh, bail them out. And I tell you what, I'm not bailing any chicks out. I don't know why you would either. But, um, you know, I, I just, don't, I, I've said this time and time again. I, you know, the information is out there. It is not hard to read. It is not hard to find. It is not hard to understand. You do some reading. You pay attention. You devote a little bit of your day every day learning more about it. And you do just fine. Remember, who's talking to you right now? I am a self-made multimillionaire who grew up with nothing. I don't even have a college degree. My father didn't teach me how to be successful. My mother didn't teach me how to be successful. They didn't know. Or they would have done it. I had to learn it on my own. 
I read stories like this, I'm blown away. You know, you if you start saving for your retirement in your 20s, you're guaranteed to retire a millionaire. Guaranteed. If you just put the money in that you're allowed to put in an IRA and don't do anything else, guaranteed to be a millionaire. Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, it's amazing what you could do if you just took advantage of the opportunities that existed. And all you whiners and crybabies out there, and the people who just refuse to save any money. I, I don't get it. You'd rather have 16 iPhones, each of the last 15 versions plus the new one. You'd rather have 16 iPhones than to put some cash all away. You know, you'd rather have uh, the flat screen TVs. You'd rather have, um, you know, go down the list of things you'd rather have. And by the way, I've got many flat screen TVs, but not until I had a few million dollars to the bank. But the little ladies aren't saving enough. Oh, shocking, isn't it? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. So they did a study and they found women are not saving enough for retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that thing a study. What a bunch of rooms. What a bunch of maroons. 1 800 5 800 866. Trina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm 28 years old. I'm ashamed to say I work for a federal agency, so we have a great retirement plan. And I don't save anything. So I'm calling to agree with you. I know we don't, as women, or most of us as women, don't do it. And I don't know why. Um, I guess I'm scared because I'm ignorant in regards to where do I go, what do I save. And they even offer classes at my work. And where, you refuse to go. And I don't go. I feel like I'm, I don't want to ask them questions. So Why not? Because uh, I don't want to be embarrassed. You know, with other people that are... But it, it's a class. What do you think? You think everyone in there is an expert? If people are going to a class, do you think they're all experts in investing? No, but they're doing it already. So I figure I'm going to be asking questions, you know, new questions, and they're going to look at me like, what a dummy, you know? But wouldn't you... Aren't you more concerned about being, um, like, poor and eating cat food when you're an old lady? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, then you I shouldn't am. worry about what people think of you. You're right. You gotta think like a guy, Trina. Am I? Yeah, I'm married. My husband invests all of our money. He does everything, and I'm even scared. I'm not one. I don't buy purses. I don't buy. You know, I'm not. I'm not a materialistic person. But I do when he does these investments that are, you know, large investments. I think, oh my God, what are you doing? And he makes more money than he loses, definitely. But I'm just so scared. I'm like, oh, gosh, this is our money. This is what we work so hard for. But, you know, I'm, I like I said, I work for a federal agency. He works for a, a really good company also that offers and He saves, and he's always telling me, you need to save. You need to go in there, do retirement plan. And I don't, I, I don't know. Let me give you an example, dear. Mm -hmm. What happens if he dies? Oh, I, I would be lost. I would. All right, you'd be lost, but then when you stop being lost and you start realizing you have to go on with your life, right. how are you going to pay for everything? Well, first I have to figure out where our money is, because <laughs> he, he does everything. Why right? don't you know that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I trust him completely, and I allow I'm not talking about trusting him completely. He can be a completely trustworthy person who gets hit by a bus. Right, right. 
Yeah. Right. I don't know. And what? he tells me, he, I know where everything is. He tells me where it is in the case of something does happen. Oh, I've you done know, that in relationships. I have done that. that. I have done that in relationships. I have told, I have said, here, sit down. Let me show you. I've got quick in here. Let me show you where all the money is. They, they don't want to sit down. I know you're doing a good job. I know you're taking care of what? That's me. Well, guess what? Here's the other thing that happens. By the way, it's happened with me already with some of the people I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. What if he divorces you? Yeah, that can happen. Half of all marriages end in divorce. What will happen to you then? Same thing. I'd be lost. I wouldn't know what to do. I mean, uh huh. I yeah. And when yeah. your attorney says to you, "Oh, I give me a list of all his assets," <laughs> I do that. I I would say. But I don't you know. don't. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Tom. Absolutely right, and I'm I'm example number one, unfortunately. I mean, the odds of being married until you're 75 years old are slim. Yeah. Well, gosh, I really don't know what to say. I just wanted to call and agree with you. And, and well, then it's time to start donning. It's time to start doing something about it. And if you don't want to go to a classroom and ask questions in front of other people, it's time to read some books. Absolutely. I know that breaks your brain just to think about reading books <laughs> about that, but uh, you need to do it. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I'm here to help. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, darling. Candy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? Doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, it does. We always want our famous people to be feeling well. I see. Because you are famous. That's the word of the street. And your input means something a lot of times. However, people do get disgusted by you and your opinion. But through all of that, somehow the picture becomes clear that you do make sense with some of the things that you say. I don't like the crudeness and things like that, but you are making sense what you're talking about as far as men having to work and be chained to a desk and a lot of women expecting things to be paid there for them. That's right. But my point was this, if women were smart in this generation, because maybe it's too late for a lot of us because we were raised with those fairy tales, but wouldn't it be great if a woman would get the idea that maybe she could teach her daughters that life isn't a fairy tale and that daughter can actually go out and get an education and she wouldn't have to rely on a man. Therefore, she'd have a good self-esteem, which would probably make a great relationship and probably would last a really long time. Be lousy for guys just want to get laid, though. <laughs> well, with her self-esteem, she wouldn't need that kind of guy, would she? We need a nation of Barbie dolls and Hannah Montana's. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there with this, that's, but I thought I'd throw it out there anyway. That's what the guys want. <laughs> but as I get older... You know, the girls all want to watch The Girls Next Door, and they want to watch Paris Hilton on TV, and uh, they want to be like that so they can please men. What happens on the age, though, and the reality hits them that that's not going to happen? We've already moved anymore. on to somebody younger and hotter. It's not our problem. Because <laughs> not everybody has lots of money like you, and so they I can't, think lots you know. of guys think the same way. <laughs> You're funny. You are so hysterical. And it's all true. <laughs> yes, it's all true. Well, I just want to put my input out there that if we would just educate our daughters and emulate somehow. Um, or how I certainly I think that if your daughter is fat or homely, mm -hmm. it's time to teach her to start saving and investing because no man is going to pay those bills. No man's going to help out. So in essence, if you have a lot of money and you have a hot woman and you, and you could pay her way, I guess you can't complain. Well, I don't pay for women, but uh, I do know that uh, that's the way for a lot of people. And let's face it, the hotter a, way, the hotter know? a woman is, the more likely it is that some man will come along and pay her bills. So, Tom, you're really hot and you're you're very wealthy. I what? I said you're very hot and wealthy. Oh yes, you can get any woman you want. If but you I, I pretty much, I pretty much, but darling, I'm Tom. I've been Tom Likas since I was born. I know, but if you weren't the Tom Likas, the famous Tom Likas. Being the famous Tom Likas is part of who I am. 
<laughs> okay. So if you didn't have your radio show and you weren't the personality... Darling, are, but I have a radio show because that's who I am. I have a radio show because of who I am. It's it's it, because I'm good at what it is what I, that I do. <laughs> but you're missing my point. If you were just the average Joe out there, would someone think you were hot without all the money? Uh, again, I repeat to you, this, <laughs> being Tom Likas is part of who I am. And that, that doing this radio program is a result of years of hard work. It is an accomplishment. That's right. And therefore, if somebody wants to be with me because I've accomplished something great, That's I've got true. no problem with that. I'm just not going to give them any money. Very smart. You've got to protect yourself. As just I like have. Don't let, ha let women live with you. Very That's smart. why Ed McMahon's going to be living under the freeway underpass, and I've got two houses. <laughs> It was nice talking to you. It's time for me to do my wifely duties and make dinner. Really? And then spread well, your legs I'll after that. A pizza, but I'll act like I'm going to cook, and then I'll get oh. the pizza. Oh, Jesus, another American female. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Deanna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Deanna. Um, I just wanted to call and say all these girls are stupid. I've been listening to you for a couple months, or actually like six months now, and you convinced me I have a Roth IRA, I have life insurance, I'm 21, I'm getting ready for my retirement now because I'm not planning on anyone paying my way ever. May I ask why you have life insurance at 21? Um, I have life insurance where you kind of pull money out if you ever need it. It's kind of, it's, so it's kind of like a high interest savings account. And plus, if anything were to happen to me, I, my parents did not save, and they weren't about it. So if something happened to me, I don't want to leave them completely. Well, you realize uh, without paying big commissions to an insurance salesman, uh, you could merely uh, invest your money wisely and put your parents as the beneficiaries. Yeah, that's true. But I, I work for the insurance agent, so I don't pay commission on anything. Okay. Yeah, I work for one, so... Got but, it. So, yeah, that it's to me, it's those big savings accounts that he helped me with, so... Well, uh... But I... Sorry. Uh, go but, ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, but, like, the main thing is, like, I started... I, I called you, like, three months ago. You told me to start investing in a Roth IRA, start getting all that stuff going, and so the next day I called, and I did. And what is it invested in? Um, yeah, that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I had a banker help me do it. I don't know much about the stuff. I'm, like, in the process of learning. Darling, you got to find out the name of the fund. If it's invested in a mutual fund, you got to find the name. Yeah, I should probably find all that out. And I had, learn what I had, it does. Yeah, I had help doing it because I don't know anything about that, so I didn't know what right choices to make. But... It's like I have, I started saving now, even if it's just like a little bit here and there, there's no reason to not start saving. Like, there's no reason to not have retirement planned out, or else you're going to just be working the rest of your life. Huh? That's exactly right. Yeah, and it's just not worth it, so. So now that you're saving, you'll have a better grade of cat food when you retire. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I can do whatever. When I retire, I want to be able to do what I want and not have to worry about it and not be on my Social Security that won't be there. <laughs> but. Unbelievable. Deanna, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lori, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I have a question. I yes. may have explained this before, but I've never heard it. Um. You say you can get any woman because you have so much money. Yes. But then you, but then you say you don't spend the money on them, so I don't understand. Right. Well, women are delusional. Women believe their vaginas, each individually, are so uh, possessing magical powers that uh, once they get uh, under the hood, they're going to be able to change us. So in my case, women frequently believe that uh, no matter how much I say I don't spend money on them, they say, oh, you're really a teddy bear. You're not like you are on the radio. I don't. So they give me a sample of the goods. They let me test drive the Ferrari. Oh. They let me uh, drive the pink Cadillac for an evening. And then uh, after that, then they start acting like with a sense of entitlement, like they expect to get uh, somehow compensated for this. 
Uh-huh. And uh, when I tell them uh, that I don't plan to do that, they go, well, I'm not going to see you anymore. And I say, well, that's great. I already got what I wanted. Okay. Next I victim. Okay, I get it. So you don't care. Once you get them, then you don't have I'm to not them. trying to keep them. I know. I know. Okay. You well, know, it's like question. it's like when someone brings a dog over to my house. I love that. I had a party uh, recently, and I had some people come over, friends of mine who have dogs. I love dogs. I love petting them and holding them and throwing the bone and having them run after. I love that. But at the end of the day, I want someone else to walk the dog and then take them home. Okay, but how do they know who you are if they just meet you in the bar and you're not spending any money on them? How do they know you are? Darling, I, I don't, I, when I tell guys that don't spend more than $40, what you do is you just occasionally buy a drink. That's it. No dinners, no concerts, no sporting events. And they know you have money because, what, you talk about it? Or? Well, for one thing, uh, the places where I hang out. Oh, okay. It's pretty obvious I've got money if I'm hanging out some of these places. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I want to By the way, there's a lot of women who are reading magazine articles, coaching them on how to meet rich guys, and telling them to go to the kind of restaurants where I hang out. Okay. So I hang out there, and an amazing number of them are willing to fall into the sack with me, <laughs> thinking I... that it's like a loss leader. Like, like you know, like, like I always say, when Ralph's offers a six-pack of Coke for 99 cents. They do that to get you in to buy, uh, the, you know, beef tenderloin for $28 a pound. Okay, well, I should have known you'd have an answer. Well, of course I have an answer, dear. You okay. don't have to spend anything. And the thing is, they think they're going to get you. They give you a little free sample and get you hooked. And then tell you now, from now on, you got to pay for it. Uh, but what, what shocks them is when I say, I only want to get a taste. I didn't want to buy the whole steer. I just wanted a hamburger. <laughs> Okay, well, I enjoy your show. Thank you, Lord. Okay, bye. Appreciate the call, dear. Tom Likes. Like 1 800 5800 Tom. I think that you suck what you say about marriage, and it sucks that you're persuading all of these men all over the world who listen to your show to not want to get married. The Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas. I want 800 800 tom It took a study to find that women are not saving up for retirement. <laughs> what a shocker. Let's say hello here to Courtney on the Tom Likas Show. Hi. Hi. I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I'm 26 years old, and I have three little kids, and I'm putting my husband through college right now. And we are currently looking at different types of uh, life insurance and different funds for our kids for college. And I wanted to know what you thought would be the best thing to invest for retirement. You mean the best way to invest for retirement? Correct. Well, first of all, do you have an IRA? Um, I will be soon, within the next three or four months. First thing you got to do. Okay. Secondly, does your job offer a 401k? Yes. Are you uh, investing to the max in it? Um, I'm not available to get it yet, but I will be soon. All right. You need to put in the maximum amount you can afford to put in. Okay. Do you know any of the t details of the 401k? Uh, what uh, mutual funds are available? Uh, whether the company matches your contribution? Uh, do you know any of that? I know they match half of whatever you put in. So you need to learn about the mutual funds, too. Okay. The, from day one, you want your money going into the right funds. Okay. And that means you have to do some research. And where would you suggest that I look to do that? Well, if you're willing to spend $109 a year, I believe it's $109, uh, Morningstar.com is the best, in my opinion, the best place to get information about mutual funds. Hmm. It's unbiased, unaffected by advertising or anything like that. It really breaks it down. Okay. So you need to get your company's booklet on the mutual funds they have. 
then you need to run it through uh, Morningstar.com and find out which ones are four- and five-star phones. Interesting. Okay. It's doable. I'm sorry? It's doable. Yeah, it sounds like it. Right now, our, our struggle is just that I'm with my husband in school. We don't have a lot of extra funds to put into retirement. But I also don't want to not do anything during this time period. You got to do something because, as I said, if you start in your 20s, you'll be a millionaire when you retire. Okay. So you got to do it. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck. Robert on the top like his show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? Great. Tom, I just, I'm listening to some of these people call, man, and I'm, I'm 22 and. Uh, I, I have a, I bought a house just recently. I'm making about a hundred a year, hundred thousand a year, and I have a 401k IRA, and my I also um, invest money in my company stocks, and I also have an ESOP with my company. How much do you uh, invest in your company stocks? Um, well, it goes through it goes through the um, our company stock. I haven't. I haven't got a um, a, sta- a recent statement, so I don't know exactly how much. You don't know how uh, much was taken out of your check to invest in that, or you have a pay stop? I I, I did uh, about two bonuses ago. I get a bonus every March. I took my whole bonus and I gave it, and it, they invested all my bonus in stock, which was about twenty five hundred bucks. What percentage of your total investments is your company stock? Um. I, I, again, Tom, I'm, I'm not real sure. I'd, I'd have to actually... Well, you need to know that. I, I know. I know. You need to know that. Because I, here's I, the I thing. Know. it's it, Any financial planner, any financial advisor will tell you, it is not a good idea to have a large percentage of your investments in your company's stock. Okay. Okay, well, it's good Do to you know, know Do you want an example of a company where people did that? Enron. Enron, yeah, I heard about that. Now, we don't know, I don't know what company you work for, and you might work for a much better company, and I hope you do. Uh Uh-huh. But Enron lied to its employees and told them, oh, yes, this is the best investment you can make, and there were people putting 100% of their money into Enron. Wow. And they're now poor. I I don't want to be poor. (laughs) So it's okay to show a little uh, loyalty. Uh, It's okay to, if you think, by the way, is the company a good investment? Yes, it is a good investment. Based on who? Now. Who said that? That that doesn't work for your company? Um, my, I've been working for this company for five years, and what my dad's very, uh, very smart with money, and he has told me and given me advice and said that from what he can see, this this company is a very good company. All right. Well, you don't want it to be, my guess, more than 10% of your entire investment portfolio. Excuse me, Tom, I'm sorry. You don't want the amount you have invested in the company you work for to be more than 10% of okay. your portfolio. In fact, you don't want any investment to be more than 10% of your portfolio. Perfect, man. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tom. All right, Robert. Keep in mind, folks, I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm not a stockbroker. I'm just a self-made multimillionaire, for God's sake. Michelle on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I love your show. Thank you. Um, I want to say one thing to all the ladies in the house. Please go and get Rich Dad, Poor Dad on CD, on tape, and a book, and bring it in your car and purchase it and buy it, and don't ever let it out of your car. I also suggest Retire Young, Retire Rich by the same author and Rich Woman by Robert Kiyosaki's wife. Granted, she met him. He already had money. She got lucky. She's a hot blonde. He's average looking. But still, she's no dummy. So those are some really good books for all the girls listening. Boys can listen to them, too, which they probably already had, but... If you don't know anything about money, you better listen up because Prince Charming, he's not coming, okay? (laughs) Uh, Not only is Prince Charming not coming, but even if he comes, he may leave in five years. Exactly. He'll trade you in for the new Prius. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Um, I have an IRA. I have a Roth. I own two pieces of property. I have my money invested with Edwards Jones um, in Franklin Funds and some of the moderate risk things. So, I mean, you know, anything could happen. So you should be prepared. Let's say one of your parents gets sick or something happens to whoever or you, you lose your job. The guy leaves. 
the pipes break. You have to have something saved. I mean, That's you right. know, you should live, living on tightrope, especially I live in L.A. Are you kidding me? Every time we turn around, I, every time I leave the house, I spend at least 60 bucks just because I live here. I mean, it's, you know, so... Well, every and time you put the gas pump in your car, it's 60 to 100 bucks, depending on what kind of car you have. And I want to compliment whoever designed on your show putting Metallica as the opening music. That is the best marketing tool. I mean, who are we kidding? That's your audience's favorite band, and they hear that. And even if they didn't know what who you were, anyone that hears Metallica that's going to have your station on, they're going to keep listening. So, uh, to me, that's the best riff ever recorded. There you go. So I'm sure that's roping in listeners who probably wouldn't have known what you are. Sure beats a, all due respect to Chrissy Hine. That song's a little played out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. I agree with you on that. <laughs> okay, hi, Art. I just want to say hi to Art. <laughs> Look at that. Art has a fan club. <laughs> okay, thanks, Tom. Good luck. Thank you, Michelle. Do you know her, Art? No idea. You sure? I wish I could. Mm -hmm. We can hook that up. <laughs> She's got money, too. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Janine on the top line. Your show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Long time, first time. Love your show. Thank you. Um, I know I'm the exception to the rule. I've been investing since 22. Um, as much as we ladies hate to admit it, admit it, you're pretty much right about everything, especially when you talk about money and investing. And I love listening to your show when you're talking about that. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I'm 27 now, and I've never made over $35,000 a year, but I have over 10000 set aside for retirement. I'm a licensed professional, and I advise people, actually, on how to put money away and save for the future. So I love it. I love what you're talking about. I love what you're doing. Oh, yeah. My more people need to hire qualified people like yourself. Uh, assuming you charge an hourly fee and you're not trying to hawk life insurance or something else, uh, to help them uh, make these plans and ask those questions. That's absolutely right. So thanks for what you're doing, and I love your advice. Janine, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Curtis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom Likas. Uh, big fan of yours, first of all. Thank you. Second of all, I didn't know I was going to be getting on the air because I just walked in the house. But anyways, I'm going back to the tail end of a conversation in relation to investing all your money in company stocks. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, a lot of people have made that mistake. The Enron people are the biggest example. And I want an example. For, I have an example for you. I, uh, I worked at IndyMac Bank. I come from the real estate business. Anyways, there's a kid there that was uh, basically had a Series 7, whatever, got into mortgage. Apparently, he must have not been very good at trading stock. Otherwise, he wouldn't have never jumped into mortgage. But he pretty much had the whole floor uh, put their money into the company stocks. And as you know, what happened to IndyMac Bank as of a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, was IndyMac Bank once a subsidiary of Countrywide? Negative. Was it related to Countrywide somehow? Not that I'm aware of. I thought it was, but I could be wrong. But anyways, I just got home to my kid. I didn't even think I was going to be able to get on your show, but I um, listen to you all the time, and um, I couldn't agree with you more. You should really, really diversify your portfolio, and I agree with you about the Morning Star. Thank you for that, Curtis. It's, it's, it's a great investment, but um, when you have some fun conversations unrelated to finance, I hope to talk to you on the show again. Sounds good to me, Curtis. John of the Top Like a Show, hello. Hey, what's up, Dad? Not much, son. Um, I just need a little bit of advice here. Okay. Um, I've been listening to you for over a year. Um, I actually just recently got out of a five-year relationship, and uh, right now I'm 21 years old, and I actually want to go back to school in the fall. Now, I still don't know what to do, like what to go and study or whatever. You know, um, right now I will work at a warehouse, and I don't want to be a loser for the rest of my life. Now, what I want to know is how, how can I make the most money in a degree? Well, the first thing you need to figure out is what, what your passions in life are. I mean, who are you? Um, and I don't say this to look down on you. I had to have the same conversation with myself. Yeah. And uh, what I did and what I've recommended to others is that you spend a weekend away, just you. Okay. Drive out of town, get a cheap motel room somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, sit down with a, a yellow legal pad and a pen, uh, no distractions, so leave the TV off, leave the iPod off, 
Okay. And and sit and th you have to ask yourself the questions like this: Who am I? Yeah. What am I passionate about? What do I love to do? And you need to write it all down. Not all of it will make for a career. But if you write it down and spend a couple of days just indulging yourself in, in the action, action of thinking about yourself like this, uh, you'll start to make some connections. Most people never, ever get self-analytical. That's what people like you need to do. The Tom Likas Show.